It's no secret that demon hunters are dominating the ladder. We knew we had to do something about this. So when we were updating our demon hunter course, we got some secret information from our rank one consultant. We asked him, hey bro, one last question. How do you counter demon hunters? You are not prepared. Okay. <clears throat> Anyway, after a quick exchange of cash, we got the intel we needed. Before we start, be sure to check out SkillCap.com. Everything at SkillCap is backed by a rating gain guarantee. Yes, we literally promise that you will go up in rating while using our guides, and if you don't, then you shouldn't pay. Visit the link below to get started, but for now, let's get back to the video. First off, we're going to start with their offensive abilities and unmask what is making them do so much damage. Demon Hunters have a huge arsenal of offensive cooldowns and high damage abilities in Season 3, which are all amplified by their talent, Inertia. By activating Immolation Aura and using Fell Rush, Demon Hunters gain a substantial damage buff, which they always ensure is active before bursting. Needless to say, being aware of this high impact buff is crucial to understanding when Demon Hunters are going to be doing huge damage outside of their more obvious windows. Another ability Demon Hunters will be looking to use before they burst is Vengeful Retreat, as this will give them passive fury regeneration and 10% crit chance, which is just a flat damage increase due to their know your enemy talent. So if you see the Vengeful Retreat Immolation or a Fell Rush combo, you should try to run as far away as possible, as although the kill window is powerful, its window is very tight. Moving on, another huge damage amplification Demon Hunters have is of course their Metamorphosis, which increases their haste by 20% and makes their Death Sweep and Chaos Strike hit harder. To enter this form, Demon Hunters can either use their 2 minute cooldown of the same name, or will receive it through pressing I-Beam. Don't bother with trying to stun this I-Beam though, as most Demon Hunters won't do much damage with it due to the current meta build, and they only need to channel one tick to enter the Demon form. When you see a Demon Hunter enter Metamorphosis, your best call to action is to try and crowd control them as much as possible. All crowd controls apart from silence are equally as effective, as they need close melee range to be able to deal any sort of meaningful damage. A great example of this is from high rated druids who bash them into roots and triple clones to deny any of their pressure. Finally, the last damage amplification demon hunters possess is Essence Break, which doesn't only increase blade dance and chaos strike damage by 80%, but can also hit pretty hard itself. When you see this ability, try and use a defensive as soon as possible. It's one of the biggest burst combos a Demon Hunter will do. As such, we definitely recommend you track this ability on your Omni Bar or Weak Auras. Fortunately, the debuff only lasts 4 seconds though, so if you're really fast on the trigger, or the Demon Hunter is slightly out of range, you can crowd control them with an instant and prevent taking any damage at all. So, now we've covered all the damage amps, there are a few major offensive abilities you should be aware of. The first one being the Hunt, which if you've played Shadowlands, you should be very familiar with by now. This ability has a 50 yard range and has the potential to deal a substantial amount of damage along with placing a strong undispellable damage over time effect on up to 5 players in its way. Currently, this ability has a 1.5 minute cooldown, but this does get reduced via the force set every time Throw Glaive is used, so tracking it won't be reliable. Due to how telegraphed this ability is, it can most commonly be dealt with by using Shadow Meld or other stealths like Vanish or Greater Invisibility, just as it lands to completely immune the first large hit. Or you can even root it mid-cast to delay the ability, as it will not trigger until the Demon Hunter is free. All in all, while this ability is powerful, there's far more deadly spells in the Demon Hunter's kit to be afraid of right now. One of these being Elysian Decree, which will spawn a large circle on the ground, triggering after one second for pretty significant damage. Fortunately, there's a few ways to counter this spell. First, you should look to save a movement ability to avoid it when used, as due to its 1 minute cooldown, you can pair a trinket with your blink, disengage, shadow step, or whatever your class has available to dodge the mechanic. The second way to deal with it is to stack on pets and other players, as due to mythic plus reasons, it will do reduce damage to more than 5 targets. This means that if you're playing with a Demonology Warlock and you happen to be next to a bunch of friendly imps, the damage won't be that high so you won't need to react and use your defensives. Although, try not to play around this as stacking on your teammates and being cleaved down by all the other Demon Hunter's abilities just to split Elysian Decree won't end too well. The final and most deadly cooldown Demon Hunters have is Fell Barrage, which although doesn't have a cast time, should be thought of as a channel. Similar to the mechanics of a Frost Death Knight's Sindragosa's Breath, Fell Barrage will spend Fury to deal insane AoE damage over 8 seconds. However, if the Demon Hunter runs out of Fury, the cast will finish prematurely. 
Since the spell's channel animation was removed, the only way to see this is through a buff on the Demon Hunter themselves, so we recommend picking up a weak aura for this, which can alert you to crowd control the DH when they pop this ability to prevent them generating fury and end it prematurely. Outside of these cooldowns, pretty much all of a Demon Hunter's kit will deal huge cleave damage, so try to avoid stacking as much as possible or run the risk of being immolation aura'd, death sweeped, and fell rushed into a double kill for you and your team. Okay, so now that we know how to survive their damage and what exactly has been killing us, we need a way to take them out ourselves. To do this, we must understand their defensive cooldowns. First up is their signature wall blur, which gives them 20% damage reduction and a 50% chance to dodge, regardless of where you face them. This makes Demon Hunters the only class that can dodge from behind. If you're a melee player and you see a Demon Hunter pop this cooldown, your best bet is to just swap off, as you're most likely just going to miss all your abilities. Unless you can stun them with something like Cheap Shot or Stormbolt, both of which can't be dodged, allowing you to deal damage to them while they're stunned as players cannot dodge while stunned. When it comes to casters, feel free to go through Blur as the 20% damage reduction really isn't enough to prevent a kill if they're already low. Their second and potentially most powerful defensive is Vengeful Retreat in combination with the Glimpse PvP talent. This ability and talent together will not only reduce damage taken by 35% while they are in the animation, but also cause them to be immune to all crowd controls until they land. Demon Hunters can often make the animation longer by gliding afterwards, making them immune for longer than it would seem, so be careful when trying to CC them afterwards. A very common trick Demon Hunters try to do is to use Vengeful Retreat to immune projectile crowd controls like Mortal Coil and Stormbolt, as they are the easiest to react to. To prevent this from happening to you, make sure that you're either close enough to the Demon Hunter so that your ability will land before the Demon Hunter has enough time to react, or chain it off a different crowd control like Fear so they can definitely not escape your follow-up CC. Next up, we have Netherwalk, an ability that prevents the Demon Hunter from taking or dealing damage for 6 seconds. However, they can still press their Imprison and Movement abilities. While Netherwalk can save a Demon Hunter if they pair it with Trinket and press it early, they can actually still be crowd controlled and potentially die through it. Using a Cyclone on them or a Master Shepherd Sheep will allow you to keep them in place and at the same health, allowing you to quickly finish them off when their netherwalk ends. Then we have Darkness, the AoE shadow on the ground that gives the Demon Hunter and their team a chance to avoid all incoming damage. Fortunately, you can easily counter this by fearing them out or using knockbacks, completely negating one of Demon Hunter's longest cooldowns. Moving on, we have their Dispels, namely Reverse Magic, which will dispel all targets within 10 yards on a 1 minute cooldown. This ability can be a nightmare for crowd control classes, however, there are a few things you can do to work around it. First of all, hunters can literally make this talent useless by taking Diamond Ice Trap. This ability will make Trap undispellable and render the Demon Hunter's reverse magic useless. Affliction Warlocks, on the other hand, can put an unstable affliction on the Demon Hunter and Healer, causing the Demon Hunter to deal a lot of damage to themselves if they go for a dispel on their Healer's Fear. And as for everyone else, they can try and cross CC the Demon Hunter or pull them far away from their healer, meaning they won't be able to travel back in time to dispel the CC before it ends anyway. The other dispel Demon Hunters have is Cleansed by Flame, which will cause all spells to be dispelled from the Demon Hunter when Immolation Aura is used. This talent can be very strong into Elemental Shamans and Shadow Priests, as they require their dots to be up in order to ramp their damage. However, if you see the Demon Hunter is playing this and shutting down your damage over time effects, try focusing your single target damage on them too, as not only will they take damage or CC from your backlash effects whenever they self-dispel, but they will do less damage, as they will have to consider if they are safe enough to use Immolation Aura, which is a key part of their damage rotation. Finally, we have Metamorphosis which although is largely used as an offensive, does have a key component to it that can allow a Demon Hunter to live. When a Demon Hunter uses Metamorphosis, they become immune during the initial animation as they soar through the air, and good Demon Hunters will look to abuse this to avoid that first stun in the game on them to allow them to play offensive. Now, it's quite tricky for them to do this, so playing around it may be difficult, but if you see a DH holding their meta in the opener, be wary as this may be a play he's looking for. To finish things off, we're going to cover their crowd controls. First up, we have the Demon Hunter's Undispellable Stun, Fell Eruption. This ability has a 30 second cooldown on a 20 yard range, so even if you think you've escaped the DH clutches, they're probably still closer than you think. Although this stun isn't dispellable, it's also not technically physical, preventing Blessing of Protection from removing it, although Blessing of Sanctuary still will. 
Demon Hunters also have a dispellable AoE stun from Chaos Nova every 45 seconds that lasts 3 seconds baseline and an additional 2 seconds if only one player is stunned due to the isolated prey talent. You should look to dispel this stun as soon as possible when facing Demon Hunters as it's quite often when they do their burst combo. Next up, they also have their Imprison, which is a 45 second cooldown with a 20 yard range. Unless the Demon Hunter specs into Detainment, Imprison can break on damage, is dispellable, and will only last 3 seconds. If the Demon Hunter is not playing this talent, then you should make sure to dispel Imprison when you can. Or if your healer is the one imprisoned, run on top of them so it breaks from any area of effect damage. If they are playing it, then unfortunately, there isn't much counterplay to this instant clone type CC. And finally, they have Sigil of Misery, which is a 2 minute cooldown, instant AoE fear that they can cast from 30 yards away. Like a Legion Decree, this can be dodged if you're fast enough, as it has a 1 second activation time. So make sure you try to move out, tremor, or fade before it detonates. Quite often, Demon Hunters will look to combine their stun, imprison, and fear to create a long CC chain. When this happens, try to crowd control them at the end of each CC to break up the chain and allow your healer to be free to heal you rather than being stuck in a chain that can last over 9 seconds. Alright guys, before we wrap this up, let's tell you a little bit more about Skill Capped. So we offer a 400 rating guarantee and think that's a pretty crazy thing to offer. It's like a gym membership guaranteeing you'll get ripped. Your local gym would go bust if they offered that, right? Not us. We've offered this for years because our service really does work. It works so well in fact that we're able to produce by far the largest catalog of WoW PvP guides on the internet. With over 1200 guides curated into over 300 courses across every class, no one can compare. We also have a growing library of over 1600 arena commentaries where rank 1 pros and AWC champions teach you how to play your toughest matchups. And if that wasn't enough, skill cap members can also join the premium section of our Discord server where they gain direct contact to our network of pro players. This feature has helped players just like you reach their rating goals. Alright guys, that does it for this one. Hopefully, you'll have a much easier time dealing with Demon Hunters throughout the rest of this season. As always, thanks for watching, we'll see you next time.